In this video series, I will show you how to make this simple portfolio website using Lightning Web Components and running on the Lightning Web Runtime in Experience Cloud. We will be using the Build Your Own Lightning Web Runtime template to build this single page responsive website. As you can see here, as we collapse the size of the website, we collapse down to a hamburger menu with the options to jump to the different sections of the site. The theme of this series will be to use HTML, CSS, and JavaScript to create infinitely customizable components within your website. Since we do not want the website to look like the rest of Salesforce, we will not be using the Lightning Design System. With that said, let's get started with the setup of the website. Here we are in Visual Studio Code. And the first step with anything Salesforce development related is to create an SFDX project. So we'll go to our command palette here and select Create Project. It should give us the template selection. There we are. We'll just pick standard and we're going to call this a portfolio site. And I'll stick this in a folder in the root of C. Create project. Okay, so now we have a blank uh, SFDX project. Since during this project, we're going to be using uh, scratch orgs. We're going to need to config, configure our scratch orgs so that when we create one, it already has the settings for digital experience sites uh, set up. So I already have the settings in place. So I don't like to mem memorize all of these things, so I'm just going to paste them in here. So you have to add communities and sites to the features. And then we're going to add a couple of settings related to communities and um, deploying experience bundles. So let's add these two right here. Let's get rid of that nonsense. We don't have a scratch org set up yet. So that's going to be angry. We'll fix that in a minute. So let's get that tabbing fixed. OK, so this will allow us to um, already have communities enabled in our scratch orgs, and it'll allow us to uh, deploy and retrieve the experience site bundles. So once you get this set up once, you can kind of just copy and paste this into future projects. No need to remember all of these settings. So we're going to save that. And let's create a scratch org. Now, um, remember, in order to create scratch orgs, you're going to need to have a dev hub set up. I already have a couple of dev hubs set up and authorized in the CLI. So if you if you don't have that set up, you're going to want to go get that taken care of right now. So you're going to need something like that. OK, let's close that. And let's go create a default scratch org. And we'll just call it before the site. That's nice to call it the same thing as the project. OK, so now we have a scratch org. And you can see that portfolio site is our default org now. So anything we run in the um, terminal window, any SFDX command will go to that site. So let's let's open that guy up right now. So we'll say Salesforce org open. You can also do this to the command palette, but I like to use these commands. They've really shortened up the um, CLI commands. So I use them a lot more often now. And here we are with the browser window pointed to the setup of our scratch org. Now we can go to the quick find and say all sites. And if we hadn't modified our um, scratch org config file, we wouldn't have this available to us automatically. So let's go click on all sites. And new. Let's 
Okay, in this case, we're going to use the latest and greatest. We're going to go with the Build Your Own LWR site. And we'll call this Portfolio. I like to give it a URL just in case we end up deploying this to an org that has other sites. Oh, it spells, helps if I spell the name right. Obviously, I've done this before. So add Portfolio to the URL and create. OK, here we are in the workspace. So let's go to Builder. And we'll see the default layout. I like to delete this HTML editor straight away. So I go to page structure, delete the HTML editor. Yes. And just to make it our own and prove that this is our site, let's add a text block to the body and some text here. Center it, and let's make it big. Hitting one. Okay, great. So now we have a site. We modified it just a little bit. Let's go back to Visual Studio Code, and let's go to the terminal window. And we're going to run the um, Salesforce CLI command SF project retrieve preview. Now what this will do is give us a list of the files that the project retrieve command would pull down if we ran it. And you can see here there are a bunch of digital experience files that represent the site we just created. So portfolio and they put the number one on the end of the name. And then a bunch of boilerplate pages and classes in here. But this is these are the files that represent the site we just created via the UI in Salesforce setup. So if we go back and instead of preview, we say SF project retrieve start, we will actually pull those files down from our scratch org into Visual Studio Code. And there we are. So all the files are now in our force app. Let's make this a little bigger. I've got my text cranked up so you guys can actually see my screen. OK, so if you look in, let's see, where is it? Sites. You can see we have portfolio site. Uh, we have a sam the sample or the, the default uh, assets for the website, like images and things like that. You can see in here there's a CSS file and some images. So lots of things in here that, well, just things that we need to deploy our site to a different org. So at this point, what I'd like to do is make sure that I'm no longer dependent on the original uh, Scratch org that we created. So I'm going to try to deploy this to a new Scratch org. So let's go back and we'll create another Scratch org in the same file. We're going to call this um, deployment target or just deploy target. OK, now we have our second scratch org. And you can see deploy target is now the default. So any commands we run in the CLI at the terminal window will apply to the new scratch org. So if I now do the reverse of the retrieve command is deploy. So if I say SF, that's kind of funky, huh? Let's clear that out. OK, so I say SF project deploy start. Retrieve also works here, so I can show that as well. Retrieve, it'll show the files that it would push to the default org. Oh, uh, that's not what I wanted to do. Project deploy preview. Using the wrong words here. 
So the preview command will show us the files that it would deploy to our default org. And you can see that it's all the same files that we just pulled down from our first org. So let's just go ahead and say, uh, so I'll, I'll just hit the up arrow. And instead of preview, I'll say start. And this will deploy all the files to the new, the second um, scratch org that we created. Okay, we have a failure there, but this is an expected failure. So it looks like the app switcher won't deploy. So I found the easiest way to get around this is to really just delete that file from your local uh, project and add it to your force ignore file, which means when you pull uh, the site down and when you push it up, it'll completely ignore that uh, in both directions. So what we can do is go to, uh, let's see, app menus, App Switcher, this is the guy it's choking on. So we're gonna go ahead and just delete that. We don't need to delete it from the project in the org because it's not in the org we're trying to deploy to. That's the whole error. So we'll delete the file itself. And then we'll go down to this file. Let me minimize that. Let's go down to this file called force ignore. So this is, and let me reclaim some screen space here. This is the file that determines what will be ignored when you push and pull, or sorry, retrieve and deploy to and from a scratch org. You can see that package XML is in here by default. So we're going to go ahead and add the um, app switcher .app menu. And that's it. So now if we go back to our terminal window and try the, let's do that again on me. Let me go ahead and clear that out just so it doesn't look so funky. We're gonna run the project deploy start command again and deploy all the files to our new scratch org. Okay, now you can see that the deployment succeeded. So let's go check the results of our work here. We'll say SF org open. It'll open up our deploy target scratch org. And we still have a browser window to the previous scratch org, so we can do a comparison here. Now from setup, we'll go to all sites again. Come on. All sites. We can see that we have a portfolio site here, and this is the data inspiration 5030 URL. If we go back to our original uh, org, that's efficiency data 4030. So we were able to pull that entire site down and push the entire site back up or retrieve and then deploy to two separate um, sites. Now that's important because now we don't have to worry about the existence of the org or the lifetime of the org uh, to save our site. We have everything we need securely uh, on our computers in order to replicate this site anywhere we want. So that's great. And if we go to Builder, we can prove that uh, it's our site because it should have our text on the homepage. Sure enough, data inspiration, this is our site. And efficiency data, this other site. So same site, both ways. Awesome. So let's just close all those browsers. And at this point, it's probably a good idea to uh, put this project uh, in GitHub so that you have it stored safely somewhere and you have a starting point. So if you're going to modify the files and you do something you don't like or you screw something up, you can go back to this clean version where you've just started the site. So let's go ahead and go to the uh, source control tab in Visual Studio Code, and let's say publish to GitHub. And I'm gonna put this into a public repository so you guys can all see it. And 
And let's go open it on GitHub so I can show you guys that it all worked. And there we are. So we're all set up for the next stage. In the next video, we will create our first Lightning Web component, which will be this responsive hero section at the top of our page.